these new GPUs could spell serious trouble for Nvidia and a bizarre RTX 4000 leak was just posted online. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Piano. Piano is an online course that will help you learn how to play the piano and reach your goals with organized lessons, practice tools, and live events. With feedback from real teachers, 100 plus popular song breakdowns, and hundreds of step-by-step -step lessons, Piano is a great way for people of all skill levels to start learning or honing their skills. So if you're interested in learning how to play the piano or just bringing yourself to the next level, be sure to click the link in the description below to find out more. Alright, so this first story comes from the Twitter leaker Komachi, where in a now deleted tweet, he seems to have found an official listing of Intel's upcoming DG2 GPUs. Now, in the listing, it showed actually three different GPUs, and if we head over to videocards.com, they put together a nice little chart uh, detailing what the specs of these GPUs is likely going to be. So if we take a look at the chart here, we can see that the first SKU has 512 execution units, 4096 shading units, up to 16 gigabytes of memory on a 256-bit bus, and later in the article, they actually mentioned that this memory actually could be clocked up to 18 gigabytes bits per second, which on that 256-bit bus uh, with this highest end SKU, that could allow it to get up to 576 gigabytes per second if they do end up using 18 gigabits per second memory, which, yeah, that's actually pretty fast memory bandwidth. And to me, that would mean that they probably are targeting at the very least RTX 3060 Ti levels of performance, uh, just taking a look at the amount of shaders that they have on here, the amount of memory, as well as the memory bandwidth. And, you know, there, I have seen some rumors of people suggesting that it could be as fast as an RTX 3070, which definitely would spell some trouble for NVIDIA, especially if they do end up making this GPU uh, say on their own uh, Intel node and they don't end up making it on TSMC. Now, I have heard some rumors that supposedly these Intel GPUs could end up being created on the TSMC node, and if that is the case, that's actually a little bit unfortunate because, you know, if these TSMC shortages do continue, which could be the case, well then, you know, if Intel's also making their GPUs on TSMC and AMD's making their GPUs on TSMC, you know, unless Intel has a whole bunch more wafers than AMD that we just don't know about, it's unlikely that Intel is going to actually make a huge difference in the discrete GPU market. However, I hope that isn't the case, and I do hope that they end up making these GPUs on their own internal, say, 7 nanometer node, because if they can do that, well, yeah, this is definitely going to spell huge trouble for NVIDIA, because this is actually a pretty fast GPU. It's got a lot of memory, and if they can actually pump out a bunch of these, which could be the case, well, yeah, they could actually end up gobbling up a whole bunch of market share. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the second SKU here, which apparently has 384 execution units, 3,072 shading units, and apparently up to 12 gigabytes of memory, though when I read the article I actually didn't see any SKUs listed with 12 gigabytes, so this could be an error, though um, you know, maybe there will be a 12 gigabyte version of this card, but in any case it'll be on a 192-bit bus uh, so you should probably get decent memory bandwidth out of this one as well, and then the next SKU, 256 execution units uh, 2048 shading units up to 8 gigabytes of memory on a 128 bit bus, though I do believe there is also going to be a 4 gigabyte version of this and I believe the other SKU that I just talked about should have a 6 gigabyte version as well so there's definitely going to be, you know, a bunch of different options here. And if they do come in at the right price and the availability is good, then yeah, this could be some serious competition for both NVIDIA as well as AMD. And I do really hope that that's the case because right now, boy, could we use that. Now, as good as all that sounds, you're probably wondering to yourself, you know, when are these GPUs actually going to launch? Now, that's something that we don't know for sure. However, if I was to guess, they probably aren't going to be launching this year. I just don't see any signs pointing towards that actually happening. Uh, that could be the case. Maybe they will get them out this year. However, I do think it's probably going to be 2022 before these GPUs end up launching. So unfortunately, yeah, even if these GPUs are really, really fast, it, by the time that they launch, you know, they could end up kind of missing their opportunity because if the GPU market corrects itself and you're actually able to buy an NVIDIA or AMD card, well, yeah, there's not going to be a whole lot more incentive to, you know, take the risk on a new GPU vendor like Intel, uh, although they have been making GPUs in terms of the uh, internal GPUs on their CPUs for a while, but they're pretty new to the discrete GPU market. So a lot of people may not want to actually try them out if that's the case and uh, they may be you know not too far away from say RTX 4000 at that point so yeah they could end up missing their opportunity and it's unfortunate that they won't have them out in time because if they had them out like right now man that would be absolutely perfect but you know talking about RTX 4000 let's go ahead and move on to that second story where some really bizarre information about an RTX 4000 GPU was actually recently leaked now there has been some previous information about what I believe is the RTX 4080 Ti or 4090 that has been leaked um, and the last pieces of information that we got it 
it was uh, going to be codenamed Lovelace. He's going to be supposedly fabricated on a 5 nanometer node. It's likely going to be Samsung 5 nanometer, at least that's what I believe. And according to a video cards article based off of a post of a 3tcenter.org in Cop87 Kimi uh, Twitter post, it looks like they estimated it would have 12 graphics processing clusters, 72 texture processing clusters, 144 streaming multiprocessors, 18,432 CUDA cords, which is actually over 70% more than the current RTX 3090. So yeah, this GPU is going to be really, really fast. Um, apparently, it could have up to 66.4 teraflops of FP32 performance if it's clocked at, say, 1.8 gigahertz. However, we don't know what the clock speeds of this GPU are going to be at this point. Uh, and then apparently, it's going to be on a 384-bit bus, or at least that's their guess. And they're guessing that it's also going to be GDDR6X. Although, you know, honestly, depending on when this card comes out, it could be using GDDR7. But, you know, either way, you're probably going to be looking at a 20 four gigabyte GPU that's going to be very, very powerful. And, you know, who knows, maybe they'll even slap 48 gigabytes on this if it's going to be like a 4090 or a Titan level uh, type of GPU. But in any case, yeah, we're looking at a super powerful GPU here. And the reason why I'm talking about RTX 4000 is because according to a recent leak, we could actually see this architecture in the next Nintendo Switch, which is really, really bizarre. Now, this information comes from Cop87 Kimi, where he responded to a VideoCards.com article talking about the new Nintendo Switch using DLSS and being able to hit 4k which you know honestly that's not too surprising and i think like about a year ago i did talk about this so if you want to hear more information on that i'll probably link that video in the description below but in any case yeah it looks like video cards uh, made an article based off of these uh, 4k dlss rumors around the new nintendo switch and then cop 7 kimi actually responded to that article over on twitter by saying ada now to a lot of people the letters ada may not actually mean a whole lot but he is actually referring to the ada lovelace architecture that we just talked about in the rtx 4000 series that should be coming out probably in the next one to two years here at some point. But in any case, uh, he actually followed up by saying, I mean, the new Tegra Orin could contain one GPC of ADA, nothing else. So yeah, that's definitely interesting to hear that Comp87 Kimi seems to believe that the next Lovelace architecture could be making its debut in the next Nintendo Switch. And that does lead me to believe that the Nintendo Switch is going to be very, very powerful because as we just discussed, the RTX 4000 series is likely going to be a huge jump over the RTX 3000 series. And that's just looking at say the uh, amount of CUDA cores itself and what we don't know is you know how much of an IPC improvement is there going to be what are the clock speeds going to be like so yeah yeah not only is the RTX 4000 series likely going to be very very fast very powerful but it's also likely that if the new Nintendo Switch does end up using it it too is also going to be very powerful and very power efficient as well and that's not even including uh, the fact that it apparently could be using an OLED display as well also contributing to a lower power draw so yeah if you're interested in the next Nintendo Switch this is definitely Definitely very exciting news. But hey, that's just what I think. Are you excited for the next Nintendo Switch? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.